Good afternoon again. My name is Gabriel Sterling. I'm the statewide voting system implementation manager for Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger. I wanted to go over a few more details of where we stand right now. And I will give the caveats that this could have changed as I walked across the street, um, that this is an ever-changing environment we're in. But we have come down to approximately 47,277 ballots uh, still outstanding that are with the counties currently. And I'll go through the list as we did last time, and I'll try to come back and give some specifics as to where we stand. Uh, Chatham, 17,157. Clayton, 6,026. Cobb, 700. Floyd, 682. Uh, Forsyth, 4,713. Fulton, 7,305. Um, Gwinnett, 4,800. Harris, 3641. And Lawrence, 1,797. And, I, oh, and the little one down here at the bottom, Taylor, 456. Now I'm going to go through and kind of give you where we stand and the situations behind these numbers. So we'll start at the top. And if you notice, uh, several of the counties that were there this morning have now dropped off as they have completed their uploads of the ballots that they had in hand. Uh, Chatham County is still currently scanning. Uh, I know they're working. We have an investigator there just to keep an eye on things because at some point, you know, when are you all going to ask me what happened down there? And I need to be able to answer with first hand account from our own people. So that's what's happening there. Um, Clayton County. We talked to them this morning and again after lunch. They're continuing to work. They have been, continued to scan and make uploads. You notice their total has dropped. Cobb County is continuing to finish off their ballots there. Floyd, I don't have a clear answer on the 682 just yet. Uh, Forsyth, Mandy, who's a, a great elections director, is working to get through that stuff. She is very much on the side of being accurate rather than being fast in some ways, which is really good and helpful because she is a very diligent director. Um, Fulton continues to draw down their number. They have 7,305. Again, with the work of our monitor in there, we're keeping a close eye on that number. There were 1,200 ballots went through a second stage of signature match. They were brought over from State Farm Arena today. They're inside that total. Um, one other specific item I have from Fulton County is they have 3,900 provisionals. I do not know the coding on those provisionals. As you may or may not know, depending on the coding, there has to be actions done by the voter or there's an automatic acceptance of those ballots. Again, depending on the coding of those, and I do not have that detail. Um, Gwinnett is down to 4,800. Uh, that was a, we had discussions with them about what that, why they had the 7,700 out there. Part of that is just a scanning differential between the accepted ballots and those who were reported. So their actual total is about 4,400 of the absentee ballots to uh, new absentee ballots to scan and report, and they did have an issue that was asked about earlier this morning. Uh, they had a corrupt memory card on one of the early voting um, ICPs, the uh, polling place scanners. They discovered that. They took the ballots from that. They rescanned those, and those will be included in the totals. It's approximately 400 votes, and that is included in the 4,800. Um, but that's one of the benefits of having a paper backup is that you could if those situations occur you can take care of those. Uh, Harris is continuing to work. Lawrence County we talked to them this afternoon and they are trying to figure out exactly where the batches are for the 797 because they had thought they had uploaded them and they looked and realized they had not. Um, Taylor had a unique issue. They did their absentee ballot printing in-house uh, something along the way made the ballots not the appropriate size. So if you have a ballot that is based on coordinates, which a hand marker ballot is, and it is not the right size, it cannot be scanned. So they're going through the process of duplicating each of those ballots on the ballot marking devices. And then what they have to do is have to take the original ballot and the duplicate ballot so they can tie them together, have to be marked that each one matches to the other one to keep a paper trail alive of the original artifact of the voter. They will take those ballots and it's 456 of them and then run them through their scanner. They are a little over halfway through that process right now. As you can imagine, it's an arduous process. You want to be precise and make sure you get the ballot reflecting exactly what the intended vote of the voter was. So again, that gets to a total of 47,277. On another note, following up on another question that was asked earlier today, we have that this is included in the counts we have right now. There are 17,529 UACAVA, which is our military and overseas ballots, that have been accepted in the counties. And as I noted earlier, under the federal laws, the 
UACAFA ballots that are postmarked by Tuesday can be accepted up to tomorrow, Friday. So of the pool of those, there are 8,899. That doesn't mean that any of them will arrive, or it means that all of them could arrive. We have no way of knowing that number. So I just want to make that clear. It's not there's 8,900 ballots to be counted. Those are ones that could arrive to be counted in any subset thereof. So with that, I will answer any questions you may have. Mr. Secretary, can you tell us how long you think it will take for the count to be done? Well, let's see. First of all, not the Secretary. Uh, I'm for the statewide voting system implementation well, manager. Let me ask you that question again. Yeah. <laughs> How long do you think it will take for it? Again, as we've been stating for weeks and months, that with the advent of paper, it's going to take time. We anticipate having the count quote unquote done when the legal deadline for certification is, which is going to be 10 days after the election. That's when we're done because there are ballots that are still coming in, there are ballots to be cured, there are ballots that are provisionals that are to be verified. So we can't know how long the process will take. We hope to have clarity on the outcomes of these elections as soon as possible. However, when you have so many important elections in the state being so close, done is a very relative term at this point. We're trying to get all the legal votes counted accurately so we can get the right results and make sure that everybody's vote is reflected properly. So do you think the counting Yes, sir. What's yes, your sir. message to people around the state and around the country who claim the amount of time it's taking Georgia is some sort of effort to steal an election or cheat? The effort here is to make sure that everybody's vote, legal vote, is counted properly and that the actual results are reflective of the voters' intent. The, the issue we have in Georgia is, like I just said, it's a close vote. There's other states that have more votes to count than we do, but it's a wide margin, so nobody cares. So this is the first time we've used paper ballots in this state in 20 years. So as we said, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, the secretary stood where I'm standing and said, this is going to take a little more time. These close elections require us to be diligent and make sure we do everything right. If I yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Sterling, can you talk a little bit about the recount process if you get to that point, given how close some of these races, especially the presidential races? What happens and when will that happen? Uh, under the law in the state, there's two different ways you can request a recount. You can request it before certification if you are going to allege that there's anything, any specific irregularity that has occurred. That would be a county by county function. You really, we don't see a mechanism in place to call for a statewide uh, a statewide recount under that scenario. The second way is it would have to be after certification, and whether that's county certification or state certification, I will leave that to lawyers, but um, it would potentially be after the state certification. And then at that point, one of the good things we have happening today is that we have been setting up for our risk limiting audit, and in doing that, we have what's built, are called ballot manifests, where we know the amount of ballots in each one, and they are tracked, so we know exactly how many there are. And the rule we passed to help define the recount after we passed HB 316, which was our election reform law that was supported by Secretary Raffensperger, was that essentially you would take a uh, sample amount of ballots, run them through the scanner, make sure that it matched what we saw there, and then you would rescan those ballots on the central scanners called the ICC at each one of the counties. In anticipation of this, as I noted in our, our conference earlier, uh, the Secretary directed that we procure the high-speed high capacity scanners for each and every county regardless of population for just such an occasion as this. Is yes, John. What uh, is the cost of a recount? How long does a recount take given the volume of votes? And in the history of Georgia, have recounts never made a difference in the results? We anticipate most recounts do not make differences, and but in the past we weren't involving the paper on that, especially this volume of hand marked paper. Uh, the cost, unknowable, unknown at this point. I couldn't give you an answer on that one. The good thing is we have already procured the necessary equipment statewide for such an occasion. Um, how long it's going to take? It will be faster than what we saw in Chatham County where a judge decided to order a hand, mark, uh, hand count of, of the ballots we had off the BMDs, and it took five days to do 5,000 ballots. In this case, using technology, we anticipate it could take up to a week. Uh, again, that's just our first blush look at it. We, in fact, we were talking with some logistics companies earlier about making sure we put processes in place with the counties, but it would have to be after the certification in order to make that happen. Yeah, John, Which follow up. On the timeline. Mm -hmm. So you have to, by law, certify by November 13th, is that correct? No, the counties certify by November 13th. The state has to certify by November 20th. And uh, in that process, do you anticipate uh, sooner than later? What is your best guess if by this weekend, by Monday, and we might have 
that here's the issue. We are reliant upon the counties to do their jobs and do their jobs properly. We have talked, we had a, a conference call with all 159 counties this afternoon led by our elections director, Chris Harvey, basically laying out this timeline to them saying, the sooner you get the stuff to us, the sooner that we can um, uh, get the, um, your certifications done, the sooner we can get the uh, audit done, and the sooner we can get our certification done so we can get that out of the way. Because we need to understand a few things about those 159 elections directors I was talking about before. We have a potential in the state of having a statewide runoff for a state level election in the PSC. That means that there will be one on December 10th. That means they have to be prepared for that. Under our state law, they have a rollover list where they're going to have to get the absentee ballots out for all, it's nearly 700,000 people now. The state's not doing that in this particular case if there's a state runoff. There are three counties that have the Congressional District 5 runoff election to fill out the remainder of John Lewis's seat. And early voting for that begins, believe it or not, on Monday. So they'll be running those elections. At the same time, they're going to, have to be preparing for this audit. We have to get ready for certification and then a recount. And then in the middle of that, we now look like we're going to have to have a runoff potentially for the Purdue seat along with the um, uh, Leffler seat. And the state will be doing the rollover list for those, which again, 700,000 ballots we have to prepare for. We have worked on making sure inventories are in place for those runoff elections um, for the absentee process. We encourage the counties to go through their inventories. The state ordered stuff about a month ago on the just in case the scenario presented itself. So obviously, John, lots of things happening at one time. These elections directors are going to have a very good sleep sometime after probably January 15th. Yes, ma'am. Hold on a second. Uh, no, no, sir. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any numbers on uh, At this point, we don't have any of the numbers coming in on the cured ballots on that. As you know, they have until tomorrow to cure those ballots. Stephen. Well, one of the issues you have is first, absentee ballots were allowed to be submitted legally by 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So, everybody, like I said before, everybody's running the election on Tuesday, so you get into Wednesday. Then you have to do signature verification to assure that that ballot belongs to the person who previously requested it. So that's one of the important things is we want to make sure the actual human being who voted that ballot is the one who requested that ballot. That's a very important distinction of absentee ballots in Georgia. Then they have to go through the process of putting them into batches. Then they get scanned. And when they get scanned, if there is an overvote or an ambiguous mark on an election, it then has to be adjudicated. And that requires volunteers from the Republican and Democrat parties to sit together to decide what that voter meant. And when you have a larger number of ballots, it takes a longer amount of time. Sir, yes, sir. Well, let me explain what the difference of outstanding means. I mean outstanding from our vote totals. They have 15,000 scanned, and they have 2,000 more to scan. I know they're working on it right now. As I've noted before, and if you go to the Savannah Morning News, they've got a good explanation of their split registrar versus elections, which slows that process down compared to other states. So they batch them a little bit differently, and that just takes some more time. That's one of the reasons we're thinking investigator to make sure there's no – that's the reason I'm aware of right now. We want to make sure there's nothing else that's causing any issues down there. Yes, sir. Any, but, uh, first of all, the Secretary of State's office does not make those distinctions. Those are county-level decisions made by county elections directors and their designees. Uh, any ballot that came in late after 7 p.m., it's not that it's an illegal vote system, it's no longer allowed to be counted because it came in too late under the law. It's things like that. So we will have a, an inventory of those after the election, but right now we're focusing on counting those legal votes that we know were there. When you do the uh, risk Hold on, Emma. Oh, you know what? You've been patient. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> when you do the risk limit, the audit, yes. and you rescan the ballot, Well, on the, on the um, uh, risk limiting audit, there is no scanning. It is only based on what a person can read. So that's what the whole point of this is, is to make sure that the outcome is reflective of what the individual voter who read their ballot, who scanned it to go in, is what is done. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Owen, can you also comment about the military and the overseas? You said there's about 17,000 that have been accepted. Yes. About 8,900 that could still arrive. Yes. Could this mean that in addition to the 47,000 that are still left, this could take us into Saturday, possibly Sunday? There is a possibility. Now, the likelihood is not all 8,000 of those are going to show up. But I understand that with the close nature of the, especially the presidential race, those could become vital and, and important. But there is a cutoff time. That's why we have laws. That's why we have certification times. 
and the reason that we have those is so we can get to a, an ending. As I stated before, we have to certify this election by November 20th because under the law, we have to get the federal runoff ballots for the Senate runoffs out by Saturday to UACAVA on Saturday the 21st. So we can't have anything get in the way of our timelines on this. So it's going to be difficult for us to make it as it is, and our poll workers, our elections directors, our election staff, the Center for Elections, they're going to be putting a lot of long hours to bring democracy to the people of Georgia. Mr. Charlie, um, you yes, ma'am. The only one we have right now is because we have that monitor and full time notice 3,900. I don't have an answer. With it. We're working with the counties to get a handle on how many they have. Obviously, they have to be cured or actually verified by tomorrow. And I don't know the codes on any of these. So right now, I'm, I've really put a lot of work into the um, uh, elections directors right now to answer questions. So that's one I'm going to leave for a little bit later. I would like to, I'd like to know the answer, but they're really focusing on getting those last ballots done. Yes, ma'am. Can you just briefly sum up and, 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 and recap the difference Frankly, I don't remember the number I gave this morning. I think it was like 62,000. Um, I thought there were a little over 47,000 now, but there have been changes even inside that number, like I noted before, the Gwinnett numbers from that one scanner for absentee in person, which is what early vote is. And actually, while I have everybody here, just to clear a few things up, people get confused. Early voting, and they, they go online and they look for, I was, I've listed it having requested an absentee. I didn't. Early voting in person is what they call absentee in person. So that is what they have done. They voted absentee in person. So I know there's some confusion out there, so I want to clear that up. Um, we feel like we're in a very good position to have most of it done. Heck, we've got most of it done now. We're down to the final percent or so, which when a race is this close, obviously everybody wants to know when's it going to be over. The only outlying edge we have is the certification deadlines. Yes, sir. What answer do you have for the president who keeps insinuating Um, my straight answer in this state with these elections directors is they're doing the best to make sure that every legal vote is counted and the outcome will be whatever the voters of Georgia have chosen. And yes, it's a tight race. So be patient. The outcome will be certified. We will have an audit so we will all know that the outcome is correct. Mr. Chairman, is yeah. your follow-up on the provisional? You know, I'm not sure I have to get back to you with that. I mean, my assumption would probably be end of business day. It's not going to be midnight for some of these people because we have to have people operate on regular business hours. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. The Secretary of What's that? Where is the Secretary of State? He's in meetings trying to keep up with a lot of this stuff right now. I've get, I'm the numbers guy, so I get to talk about some of this stuff. Yes, sir. Individual like the jacket, by the way. There is no paper trail to go back because under the state constitution of Georgia, it is a private vote. As, as an, an absentee ballot, we have a secrecy sleeve around that. So once it is verified as having come in, the secrecy sleeve is separated from the individual. So that when they open the ballot, they don't know who that's tied back to. So there's no way for the person to verify it once it's been cast. Every single vote has to be looked at and examined by that individual voter as they send it in. And with the outcomes we've seen, this pretty much falls in line with everything we've, we've been looking at. Everybody's credit for voting is there, absolutely, but there's no way to, there's no physical way to tie a vote back to a person. That would lead to things like vote buying. It's the reason we don't have, we don't allow photo, photography of your ballot in the, in the booth. What else we got? Yes, ma'am. At this point, they're going to be looking at the process and making sure, because we anticipate with any area that goes quote unquote late, even though this is part of the process, there will be questions raised. We want to be able to have a first hand account of how things were processed and what was done on the ground. Sir, if I could yes, sir. That does not include provisional ballots because those may or may not be counted. And the other thing is the 8,899 overseas ballots. Is that just military or could that be? Uh, it's, it's uniform military overseas. It could be, it could be a, a, an expat. Yes, it could be under that same thing. Yes, John. Having said everything, Well, I think people are going to try to rig a system that might have seen something a little bit less close than this. That's one. Two, 
we have in this process 159 dedicated elections directors and their staff who are working to make get this right. They are working diligently every single day. Uh, we have the we know how many requests came in for absentee ballots. We know how many ballots were received. So that is that is an outward bound. So nobody could suddenly show up with 100,000 extra ballots somewhere. In this state, in particular, we take security very seriously. Uh, the, the entire name of our campaign for, for launching this new system was Secure Your Vote, and it's really important. And I understand that in other states there are questions. I can only speak for this state, and I can speak for the people of Secretary Raffensperger's staff, the elections directors around the state. They're going to get it right. We're going to have an audit to prove they got it right. We went from risk limiting audit, which is a little more difficult to do than traditional audit. We're going to have a recount for president more than likely, and people will see those outcomes stay essentially the same. The recount we had in Savannah really proved that the scanned ballots were the same as when a human being read and counted those ballots. So I feel like in this state, we have taken the steps at every level to secure that vote and make sure the integrity of the ballot is protected. All right. Um, yes, ma'am. Sorry. I know they filed that lawsuit. Um, anything else? All right, thank you all very much. Have a great day. Oh, John, come on, one more. We have been sending out reports about every half an hour of the ballot counts as they come in. Uh, we will try to supplement those with county level counts as well if, if we can get to that point. But the main thing is balloting is continuing, but ballot processing and counting is continuing. We have the basic pool of, of ballots that are there, so we know the outward edge of these things. Again, I said I was prayerful that we would be done today, this morning. I am still prayerful for that, but if it has to go to tomorrow to make sure that we get it accurately done, then so be it. So thanks a lot, guys.